ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Okay, so our basic course is uh, this course linear algebra. I call it as basic linear algebra. For this course, uh, the main text um, as referred in the bulletin is Krasik Advanced Engineering Mathematics, Eighth Edition, Chapter Six and Seven. Uh, so those are the basic uh, two chapters that will cover roughly the additional reference. You can also refer the book from Geometry to Algebra. a course in linear algebra uh, available in our library as far well as uh, outside is a half semester course so roughly uh, there will be 21 contact hours every week we'll have a tutorial hour so there will be around 7 weeks so 7 contact hours for the tutorials and you are expected to put in about 3 hours per week okay so that means 2 hours per week so 42 hours other things like what is labor's grading policy and evaluation i'll be putting it on the moodle so access your moodle sites and get from there okay let us look at why one studies linear algebra right so let me i show you a small
basically these are all uh, applications of linear algebra and if you are going to work in any one of these fields later on there are many more actually I will list some of them uh, you will need uh, linear algebra so that is uh, why uh, linear algebra is put as a basic course for all engineers as well as mathematics students economics students and so on so let us look at uh, some of the other topics so higher studies in mathematics will need positively linear algebra physics needs linear algebra computer graphics yes economics so all modern economics is mathematical economics statistics electrical engineering and mechanical engineering and many more so there are many more fields where this will be uh, linear algebra is useful so uh, let us begin with uh, what they were going to do in this course is basically cover some of the basic concepts that will be required uh, later on by you so basically linear algebra is a study of uh, uh, linearity uh, which arises in two situations one is uh, study of linear equations in more one and more variables and secondly it also uh, is study of geometry in the algebraic setup so that's where the linearity comes into picture so geometry can be studied only in one dimension or two dimensions or three dimensions but you can't visualize geometry in fourth dimension so how do you do geometry in fourth dimension and higher dimensions that is done by linear algebra okay making it abstract also there are two components of linear algebra one is the computational aspect that is called the numerical computations and other is geometric uh, visualization or intuition how a geometry can be translated into so we'll be using both these aspects in our course uh, to study the linear algebra okay so that you get a feel for the subject so let us i'm just going to start recalling some of the basic facts you might have studied in your school or uh, first, uh, last year in some of the courses so what is a linear equation in two variables so a equation of the type ax plus by equal to c their x y and uh, are variables and a b and c are scalars which are fixed so variables are the quantities which can take any values so ax plus by equal to c is called uh, a linear equation in uh, two variables and not all a b and c should be equal to zero because if all are zero then there is nothing to be done right okay so uh, as a set you can write this as the all ordered pairs x comma y such that ax plus by is equal to c so as a ordered pair right so you can write this uh, as a set so now one once you write it as a set geometrically you can think of plotting it right you can plot this so this is what is called the graph uh, of uh, the line uh, it is a straight line and uh, it indicates all the pairs x comma y which satisfy this equation so you can call that graph as a solution of the linear equation right those are the values which satisfy um is interesting to see whether what happens when a and b and c change how does this line changes right so let me just show you something you might not have seen it earlier how do things change when a b and c for example this is the line and you can see the value of a is equal to 1 value of b is equal to 1 and value of c is 1.5 and i can change this if i change the value of a right do you see what is happening to the equation the inclination is changing but something is remaining fixed and that is the point where it is cutting uh, the axis y axis if i change b again i am changing b to the various values again right the uh, inclination changes and if i change c right you can see what happens is interesting to see that uh, many of many times it is not observed that if an a is positive this is a inclination and when a becomes negative that is a inclination right 
and that is a position horizontal when uh, a is uh, zero. Okay, so negative zero to positive. So that is uh, geometry of uh, this solution set of uh, a linear equation in two variables. Let us look slightly go a bit further. Let us look at uh, two equations in two variables. So there are two equations a one x plus b one y equal to c one, and the another equation a two x plus b two y equal to c two. And we want to find see for a x the first equation the solution set is a line geometrically. The second one the solution set is another straight line. So when you want to say that you want to find simultaneously uh, solve this. Right. That means we want to find those points x and y in the plane which satisfy both the equations, and that essentially means that is where the lines may intersect. So both lines are parallel, okay, but not coincidental. So they will never intersect. So there is no solution possible geometrically. Lines intersect, and that is one of the axiom of geometry that the two lines always intersect only at one point if they do intersect if they are not coincidental that means there will be only unique solution for the two system of two linear equations right if at all they are non coincidental then there will be one solution and lines are coincidental that means the two lines coincide so there are infinite number of points where the solutions are there so geometrically we get this information from geometry that for a system of two equations in two variable three possibilities arise both the lines are parallel but not coincidental that means uh, they will never intersect no solution and unique solution and infinite number of solutions so these are the geometrical possibilities for linear equations one can try to solve these things uh, uh, geometrically how do you find that point of intersection geometrically so that is a question one would like to answer so the idea is if this p is the point where these two lines intersect if you can rotate one of the lines so that it becomes horizontal or vertical that will give me the x coordinate or the y coordinate of that point right so given a line one one of them is fixed there is a point of intersection i rotate the other line okay so that it when it becomes horizontal right when it becomes horizontal what will be the uh, line y equal to something so that is the y coordinate of the point of intersection so basically geometrically that is what you want to do and one can do that i just want to show you that how it is possible to rotate uh, and that gives a hint how to solve the equations algebraically okay so let us look at what does it mean so these are the two lines blue and the red one which intersect this point okay so 2x i have just taken an example 2x plus 3y equal to 1 x minus y equal to 3 okay now what we have done is i have taken a combination of these two lines so 2x plus 3y plus 3 times the 3 is the value which is i am going to change okay and let us see what happens so what i am we are discovering is that if you take a combination of the two lines a linear combination of the two lines then what happens see point of intersection remains the same when you take a linear combination but what is happening is the slope of the line is changing right when it becomes horizontal that will give me the value of the x coordinate and when it becomes horizontal uh, horizontal that will give me the value of uh, oh, sorry right so that will give me the value of the y coordinate so geometrically that is how you can solve a system of two linear equations in two variables so basic idea is if i take a linear combination of the two equations right idea should be that one of the variable should vanish either it should become x is equal to x0 or y equal to y0 that will give me one of the coordinates and i can put back the value in the equation either of the equations and get back the other so geometrically that is how you solve 
So, it says that we should uh, be doing something called change of vari uh, uh, so variation uh, sorry uh, we should be doing elimination of variables uh, for the equations. So, let us uh, just so that is what is uh, explained here that if I take a linear combination the slope will be different right the new linear combination will have a different slope because a and b would have changed for the new equation, but the point of intersection remains the same. Why does the point of intersection remain the same? Because x 0 y 0 satisfies the first equation right then a x 0 plus b y 0 a 1 x 0 plus b 1 y 0 equal to c 1 and similarly for the other equation when you add they will remain the same right. The point of intersection will remain the same the only the slope changes so it rotates. So, that is the geometric way of solving, but algebraically we can solve it ok. So, algebraically the idea is try to eliminate one of the variables, so that you get the value of the right eliminate one of the variables you get the value of the one so uh, coordinate of one and find out the other. So, for two uh, you do this in the school, so given and you want the coordinate of x, so you want the y component to be 0. So, you put that equal to 0 and solve ok. So, you can do it algebraically also. So, the basic idea that we are getting from here is that to find a solution of two linear equations in two variables, you try to eliminate one variable right from the by taking a linear combination of the two equations ok. So, this is called the variation um, the uh, variable elimination method for the two variables. Let us try to go a step higher and see what happens when you have got equation in three variables. So, A x plus B y plus C z equal to D, A B C are D are constants and x y z are scalars. So, what is this equation? What does it geometrically represent? So, we have to represent x, y and z. So, it is a triplet x comma y comma z right that will be a point in R 3 right. So, let us see uh, how uh, what does this represent. So, let us just try to uh, see. What does the three variable equation in three variables yeah, represent? If we set A, B, C and D 
to 1, 0, 0, and 3, all variables but x are eliminated, giving us a graph which consists of all points with an x-coordinate of 3. The graph of this equation is a physical plane, three units in front of the origin. Coefficient to zero, and the x and y coefficients to one. This eliminates z from the equation, but leaves the variables x and y. Now, if we set the value of d to three, we get the linear equation x plus y equals 3. Let's ignore z for the moment and plot this equation on the xy plane. This gives us a line which intersects the x and y axes. Every point on this line is a solution to the equation x plus y equals 3, where the z-coordinate of every point is 0. But there are more solutions than this. All points on any line where x plus y equals 3 are solutions to this equation, regardless of the value of z. There are an infinite number of lines like this, one line for every possible value of z. Since z can be any real number, all these lines together create a plane. Each point in this plane corresponds to a solution of the linear equation x plus y equals 3. The graph of a linear equation and three variables will always be a plane when graphed in Cartesian coordinates, assuming that the constants a, b, and c are not all zero. Any plane which corresponds to the solutions extends infinitely in all directions. Depending upon the values of a, b, c, and d, the plane may lie in any position and orientation. So equation in three variables uh, represents a plane geometrically and one would like to know that given so the all points in the plane are solutions of that linear equation of three variables. 